So now we have a guest. Their stock's up like 40% today. So um, we'll get them out in one second. It is wise key. Uh, symbol is, uh, we got the symbol, wise key, W-K-E-Y. So let me get my little intro music going. And here we go. <laughs> Hey, we're here. We're live. We got Carlos. Carlos Morea, is that how we pronounce it? That's perfect. Very good. Uh, all right. Where are you based out of, Carlos? I am based in Geneva, Switzerland. Where did you say? Geneva, Switzerland. Okay. The audio is a little spotty. Maybe it's just my, me. Let me check one setting. Okay. Well, let's see what we got. All right. So, a lot of news with you guys. So Wise Key, W K E Y. Uh, we got a market cap 127 million. Maybe that's a little off, but I saw the news on the first ever secure luxury non fungible token NFT um, in our Benzinga Pro. What can you say about that, Carlos? So Wise Key is a sovereign security company. Uh, we have uh, microchips that we are embedding into objects. So this is uh, drones, cars, and luxury products. So we have done that for many years. Uh, in Switzerland, as you know, we produce uh, 35 million of very high-end luxury products. These products uh, needs now to be digitalized. So what we are doing is just uh, creating an identity, which is a unique identity of those objects. And that identity creates a, a digital twin, which is the one that you combine with the uh, non-fungible -fun token. So the identity is unique. That means that you cannot replicate. You cannot just copy, you know, which is one of the problems uh, this technology is having, is the fact that you can replicate and copy. And then the person that is buying the token gets a copy and not the original. So establishing a relation between the object, the original object, and its NFT it's essential, and this is the breakthrough. Wisekey has developed this technology for many, many years, and now because people are realizing that the interconnectiveness between the object and its digital twin is important, the company is booming. I mean, this is becoming like the business model of the Internet of Things that we have been doing for many years. I'm here. I'm here. I just went off the screen for a second. So, you, 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 have you been working on this part of it for a while, or how long have you worked on th th this announcement, this part? So, so the the back end of the technology has been there for many, many years. So, which is the identity that you put inside objects. So, imagine luxury products. Imagine uh, jewelry. Imagine. Uh, uh, art, paintings, and watches, right? So this technology in Switzerland was very important because we produce so many watches and luxury products, but we have millions of counterfeiting on those products. So what is new here is the possibility of combining the physical identity that we know very well, and we are market leaders on that. We have 1.6 billion objects already tagged by the Wisekey technology with the capability of creating a non-fungible token. This is what is new. This is only about a month new, uh, we have been testing the technology. We, 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 we thought that it was great and breakthrough. We never expected to be what it is now, which is uh, attracting so much investing money to the company and attention. And it's because it's one of the concrete applications on NFT. There's a lot of hype around. It's a lot of people telling anything about it just because they want to get exposure. This is a very mature technology. Wise case is a cyber security company as a DNA. So we do security for citizens' identity, we do security for transactions, payments, we do security for connected cars, we put chips into drums like Parrot uses our technology for drums. So this very mature technology is now being injected into, into the blockchain. So we use the blockchain as a way to certify and identify the, uh, the identity of the object in a decentralized way. And now with the NFT technology, we can now monetize that identity. So uh, your virtual digital twin now has a value. If I buy your uh, piece of art or your collection watch, which is what we just announced today, then we're going to be next week uh, announcing and launching one of the, it's going to be actually the, the first ever auction of a very expensive watch, which is a Swiss watch. And we will disclose that next week. And 
that watch will have its digital twin on a uh, ocean, the open sea uh, NFT marketplace, and people will be able to auction, to enter into the auction using their cryptocurrencies and participate into the creation of the value for that digital twin. So this is a, a breakthrough because it basically lets the entire economy of uh, very expensive objects to, to have now uh, a business model. Imagine you, if you own paintings, if you own watches, maybe they are in your house, maybe they are in your safe, but they are dead assets. You, you cannot monetize them. The only thing you can do is sell it then, right? Now with this technology, you can keep the original and monetize the digital twin, the NFT of that original. And what is amazing is the market is reacting. It's actually what I call the next generation internet because it brings a business model to this crypto world that we didn't know first how to monetize. There has been a lot of hype about blockchain, about everything goes around, but the, the business model was missing. So this technology as the business model was gonna be a $2 trillion economy. Got it. Got it. Okay. That's a lot. So I, so at first, that's, that's a lot. So there's a lot of different things we just want, you went over. So I want to go into it a little bit more, a little deeper, but this right here that I'm looking at, um, is this, is this the, the, where the auction is taking place? Exactly. So this auction, the, the watch is going to be announced next week. This is, uh, this is just to announce the auction. It's going to be an ultra luxury, uh, watch, uh, Swiss made. Uh, which is owned by a very prestigious uh, brand. And, and this is going to be uh, the non-fungible token is going to be uh, created. So the watch has its equivalent into the marketplace. The marketplace we are using is um, OpenSea, which is the largest today. It's a totally transactional uh, uh, marketplace. Wait, and inside that market... Wait, this is the marketplace? Is wise? What's, what, what's the marketplace? Yeah, open, open C. Open C. Okay, Open, open C. C. All right, all yeah, right. Open C is the marketplace. All right. So the watch will be available in Open C. As we did it last week, we did it with art. We just uh, put some art pieces in, a, in an Open C trusted area. The Open C doesn't need any more to validate the object. That's what Wiseki does. So, so we, we create a digital certificate for every object that goes into the uh, marketplace. And inside the certificate, you put all the information related to the watch, like origin, the brand, the serial number, the, um, the um, definitions of the color, what is diamond, no diamonds. All that information goes into the digital certificate. The digital certificate is then um, converted into a non-fungible uh, token, and the non-fungible token becomes the digital representation of that object on the internet. So uh, objects, you cannot, if you have a watch, you cannot uh, monetize your watch. You have to sell the watch, but uh, that's it. That's the only thing you can do. Here, you can uh, create a digital asset for something that you own physically. So imagine in the future, you will be able to do that with a collection, like a sport car. You do that even with real estate. You can do that with uh, any object of value that can be then become uh, a token. And Wiseki has a pattern on that. You know, the, uh, the Wiseki strategic position into this. This is the first cybersecurity company that enters into this space. And we have the track record to solve very complex cybersecurity problems. But this is not like when a startup just launching an NFT. This is a company that has technology and infrastructure to be able to become the Amazon on NFT on the future, right? Okay. The Amazon of NFT, that's a big statement, but could be true. When you say you have a patent, is it a patent that's granted, pending? What, what kind of patent? Granted. This, this patent is granted in the United States and many places in the world, which is the patent that allows the uh, certification and uh, security of an object. So the establishment of an identity at the object level. So that patent uh, was actually granted uh, in 2014 already. So can you imagine? And, and, and at the beginning, that patent was merely for physical objects. Now we are extending the reach of that patent to cover also the, the virtual objects, the, uh, the, the non- you, you can just extend, you can extend the reach of the patent or do you have to resubmit? No, no, the patent is, is, is the base patent, the class patent. What you do is you develop technology on the top of the patent that, that allows you to expand now to the micropayments on the NFT of that specific object. So while uh, the patent is you, 
the and the talk. We don't need to. Uh, you cannot patent blockchain technology. It's impossible to patent it. If you want to do that, what is the point to do it, right? But um, you want to protect the asset itself. So if you tomorrow. A art gallery says, I want to put a digital certificate in my paintings because I am a museum and I want to uh, issue a, a non-fungible <clears throat> token on my painting. In that case, you will need to talk to Weisky because we, Weisky has that asset, right? Got it. Got it. Okay. And then someone asked this question. Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't, can, you, can you certify the location the NFT or token was born? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you can you, you start always at the object level, right? Uh, so if it is a digital object, we will insert a digital certificate. But the problem we are solving here is with a physical object. It's a watch, it's a painting, it is a, a physical asset that is unique, that has some uh, provenance certificate. You can already see from where that object was done or created. And with that provenance, you're going to create a certificate, a digital certificate, which is going to be inserted physically with a microchip into the object. And then when you when you read that with the uh, mobile phone or an NFC device, and there's a demo on the internet of that, which is circulating, you're going to create the digital twin. So imagine you have a watch. This watch is yours. You don't want to sell it. It's an important watch. But you don't mind to have the digital version of that watch uh, in a in a in a token in a tokenized uh, platform, so the platform can create value for something that you want to still to own. So there are two models: the models are where you own the watch and you sell the uh, NFT, uh, and 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 the token becomes the uh, digital twin, or the model that you sell both. I mean, this is the kind, this is the platform that decides with the person what type of auction you want to run on it. But the possibilities are endless. You know, the internet is going to connect 30 trillion objects to the internet. We have already something like one trillion objects. So everything is going to be connected to the internet. So everything that connects to the internet needs an identity, needs a microchip, and needs a communication channel. And that's what WiseKey provides, right? IoT is one of the fastest growing uh, segments on the internet. With this technology, you have one extension where it was already very big because suddenly, you can create an equivalent environment in the virtual world by combining a physical a a a a asset with a, a, a tokenized asset. And, and that's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough. And uh, I think the, the future is going to be um, great for right. companies that invest in this technology. Okay. I want to go to the, the financials a little bit. Okay. So just a little bit of financial. Sorry if that's boring people that want to talk NFTs, but um financials in 2017 we're at 33 million 2018 34 million 2019 there was a little drop was that an acquisition or what was that one or is that not no the, your we, we saw we saw some of our technology or identity technology to uh digicert you know the uh very yep. big american company so DigiCert acquired uh, one of the uh, identity technology we had in Europe for because in Europe you need to be European compliance with EIDAS and uh, GDPR. So we sold to uh, DigiCert uh, that technology and the revenue associated with that technology, which was around twenty-five million dollars, uh, against against uh, I mean this is disclosure because we, it was disclosed against forty-five million dollar. Uh, cash that was then invested into actually the technology we are showing today. You know, so for us it was a way to diversify our technology from just being an identity uh, company, IoT company, to enter into more blockchain related activities. And this was the investment. We invest something like fifty-five million dollar into into that, and this is what allows us now today to have a very powerful platform. Yeah, got it. Now, so what? What will two thousand? What is this year shaping up to be? I mean, we had Corona. What is this one shaping out to be? We didn't disclose yet. Yeah, the financials is going to be okay. uh, in in uh, in few days. Uh, so I will I will not discuss that because we are still in the audit process. But but we did an acquisition uh, at the beginning of this year, which was Arago. Arago is an artificial intelligence company. It's one of the leading companies in Germany. Uh, KKR invested fifty five million dollar in Arago. Uh, really? In 2014, yeah, and and and, and now Arago has been acquired by Wisekey. And why we acquire Arago is because we produce a lot of data. All these identities and microchips are sending data to our clouds, 
And now with artificial intelligence, you can analyze the data, you can provide pro pro pronostics on the data, you can provide automation process uh, because we have a uh, hero, which is a, an automation algorithm. Uh, so, so it allows YSK to, to be a platform. I mean, the vision, I mean, we are a Swiss company, right? We are not yet uh, fully in the United States. So the revenues you see there is still for an European based company in Switzerland. Weiski obviously is now entering big time in the United States and this revenue will become much bigger because the market is, is, is phenomenal, right? But in the United States, we have very good reference. For instance, Cisco is using our, our, our microchips to secure their routers, you know? So uh, that's one example. Parrot is using our microchips to secure their drones. Uh, we have Daimler cars using our microchips to secure their cars. So this is uh, this is expanding. What is new here, and I insist on that because I think it's an amazing business model, is the possibility of combining this um, huge amount of physical asset certification we have with this digital twin. That is a breakthrough on the business model of the company. So we are moving from selling technology to selling services, right? And, and this is uh, sell, selling cyber security as a service, IoT as a service, and that's a breakthrough. But so, uh, we will be unleashing the potential of AI. For instance, for a moment, we are not uh, getting revenue on, on the AI itself, uh, very little, you know, because the, uh, AI requires data, but the potential of monetizing the data we have is endless, right? Because we have a lot of data. It's, so it's, you will see that reflected in the revenue in 2021 onward. That's that's good to hear. So what, what I'm, two, I guess two questions. One, it seems to me that you're way ahead on a lot of this stuff versus what else is out there that like that yeah. it seems to me you have an early mover advantage because you've been around that's what it seems to me and the stuff the stuff you're doing that's I, i'm assuming that part is right the second thing i would like to know if that's wrong you can tell me the second thing i would like to know is what risks are there like what are things that keep you up at night potentially I mean, the, the first question is, is that exactly what it is? I mean, uh, and this is typical on European companies and they have huge amount of IP, but the market is small, so it takes longer to monetize this IP. Once they enter into the United States and they do an IPO, which is something we might do in the future because we only did an ADR2 on the NASDAQ, so we can do it still uh, something bigger, then, then the company valuation starts to, to grow. We're also trading at five, six times revenue, whether our competitors are trading at 60 times revenue, even if you see the, the, the stock going up like, like crazy. Why do you think that is? Because we are not American, because we are Swiss. I mean, Swiss, we are 8 million people country, right? And we are listed in the Swiss Stock Exchange, which is very tiny. And the only thing we have is an ADR in the US. So now, because the volumes are getting very big on, on the NASDAQ, you know, now we are so suddenly trading millions of ADRs per day. So that is creating the momentum for us to move into the US and maybe a company much bigger. But but we are unique. I mean, there is no, comp there is no direct competitor to YSK. I mean, they are competitor in small things that we do, but not in the platform effect. What can go wrong? What is going to be wrong? I mean, it's always how you make the next step. You know, the company is growing. So it's, it's exponentially growing now. And, and we need to focus. We cannot do so many things. In Europe, we have a tendency to solve many problems. Well, you are, well, you go into the United States, you have to be more focused in which are the areas you want to invest and you want to position your company. And that's why our cybersecurity DNA is now being focused in solving problems like the one we just described with the, uh, with the blockchain technology. And, and I think this is where we're going to stay. Blockchain is going to basically disrupt the entire uh, legacy systems, you know? And if you combine blockchain with cybersecurity and AI, which is the assets that we have, and then you have also the capability we have to control the microchips, then you're in a very strong position to capture the market. So, you know, we could become the next, as I said before, Amazon and what concerns the uh, the trading of the NFTs, because that is going to be the case. But, uh, you know, companies like Palantir and others are trading at 60 times revenue. Uh, I mean, we should be getting at least, you know, 20% of that, that would be already amazing, you know? So um, huge potential in the future. Yeah, so, the mar so, there, so there's a, uh there's a market recognition thing where not everyone you're you're sweat not everyone knows you guys yet so there's an opportunity and this fungible token auction um next week is a pretty big deal i mean no one's been doing that as of now like that's uh relatively new no one's no one's done that what you're doing next week 
That's going to be a world first, especially when we will disclose the brand and the uh, the, the uniqueness of this uh, operation. So uh, that will be a world first. That you will see for first time ever a physical watch with a very high price that is going to be um, made available uh, into a, um, a platform, and the uh, investors will be able to buy the watch through the platform through a non-fungible token NFT um, uh, transaction. And, uh, you know, this anything could happen. You know, the watch itself is unique. So once we disclose the characteristics of the watch, everybody will understand. The platform is unique as well because Open uh, uh, OpenSea is booming as well. They're getting a huge amount of investors and, uh, and backing up because this was one of the first uh, trading platforms. That's what I mentioned before, the Amazon, because they are really the place where you go now and buy NFT. And if you will reinforce that with cybersecurity, identity management, cryptographic keys, and everything that was key produced, we create a very high area inside that platform for objects that they are unique objects, objects that you need a higher level of protection, a higher level of security, because if somebody copies that object, obviously that will be a, 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 a major problem. So that, that is what WiseKey brings. And, and that's gonna happen the 31st of The 31st, March. March 31st, guys. That's for the auction, the link I, I provided earlier. Aaron Bree, put the, uh, the link to the auction, please, in the chat. One of the things that you mentioned already, you bought one of your competitors, a KKR funded company, how long, am I correct on that? Yeah, correct. Yeah, how long did that take from idea to buy it to like closing that deal? I mean, I always find it fascinating, public companies buying other companies. I know execution and closing those deals can be difficult and still ex execute. How did you guys do that? And like, how long did that take from uh, start to finish? I mean, it depends from where you start. So we were lucky that uh, I started discussing with the founder of this company, Chris Voss, which was the uh, majority shareholder of the company. And um, his vision and my vision to integrate data, cyber security and AI uh, was the same. Uh, so it was a meet of minds so where we say, OK, it makes more sense to be together because we are complementary to each other and we can monetize the value much in, in many more multiples. It took something like a year uh, of negotiation. I mean, that was during the COVID period. So a lot of Zooms, a lot of calls, uh, but that's normally the time it takes from the, from, from the day you, you start to uh, figure out what you want to do to the closing. We have made three acquisitions uh, in, in Europe, uh, strategic acquisitions. So we are getting good at that now. And this is a bit the, the vision we have is consolidation. I mean, th th this space is very fractionate. You have companies doing pieces, but in order to make the next very big company, you need to be a platform, not only a company with a product. You need to have a platform effect on the internet so you can create your ecosystem. And as a platform, you can integrate many other small innovation into the platform. The future, the what we call the uh, fourth industrial revolution, right, of industry four, is a future where companies like uh, Daimler, BMW, Tesla, others, they want to plug into platforms and they offer their end-to-end -end, uh, services on, on digitalization and digital transformation services. So automation is going to be massive. And this is one of the things we do as well. And by the way, with the autonomous uh, deployment in the United States, with all these uh, driverless car and driverless drones and taxis and more automation, more autonomous vehicles and things like that you're going to have, more automation you need as a company in order to sustain that, right? You cannot do an autonomous play if your own company has not been properly automated. So um, that's what we provide, right? And this is uh, this is what Arago is, and Arago has telcos, has uh, banks, institutions working with them. And now they are a wise key company. So we are very happy to have an AI player. All right, so two, two, more, two more questions. How much like does management um you know have of the stock are you guys buying more shares like how, how do you guys look at that i know it's adr here but how does uh um you know that how does uh management pair with this thing like how do you guys, I mean, you guys invest more like are you guys big owners of the stock yeah we are actually uh we i am the founder of the company so uh i am the largest shareholder now with the founder of arago because obviously arago also entering into the capital they have an important say on the company uh, but 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 we have we are the typical European company where you have something like uh, you know seventy thousand shareholders. They are pension funds. It's the traditional banks, investment banks, the traditional ecosystem here. This is going to be 
obviously disrupted once we move into the United States. And if we do an IPO, that, that you will then have uh, more institutional shareholders. And that's actually what we are doing. We are starting a non-DR roadshow in the United States. So as you say, we are not yet well known as a brand. Um, and we are not only uh, on the NF NFT, right? We are many other things. So we need yep. to position the company properly. So we are not just a play that will disappear in two weeks time once the uh, NF NFT will not be a bus anymore, right? So we are much more profound than that. And this is the, uh, this is the entire endeavor now. Yeah, and what you're saying is you have staying power. It's not just an NFT, a fungible token play. It's a security play. What you're looking at is more of a Palantir play because you have those three or four different platforms. Um, exactly. Yeah, and so it's more of a Palantir play than just the fungible. Now, I guess on in that regard, how many people work at your company? We are 300, 300 people. Wow, and it, wow. You, yeah. have three, you have 300 people there? Yeah, we are 70 in France. We are 100 in Germany. We are 50 in Geneva, and we are 40 people in, in Vietnam growing very fast as well. And we have then joint ventures, one in Saudi Arabia, uh, where Saudi Arabia is a very, very big market because they are doing the, uh, the uh, th 2030 plan. They are building a smart cities. They need a lot of sensors, a lot of chips, a lot of this technology. And we have also a joint venture in India. So uh, those joint ventures, they are being created because... Cyber security is not global. You need to localize sometimes with joint ventures in countries in order to be interoperable with the country. But are, are those 300, are those like full time with you or like a lot of those contractors? Are they like their wise key employees? Yeah, wise key employees. I mean, wise key employees plus Arago employees, you know, because Arago just entered into the uh, into the, uh, the organization. Yeah. OK, La last question. I don't know if this is a thing, but. COVID-19, do you have something that you guys are doing on that front? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the digital identity of WiseKey is for the object, but it's also for the person. So we have an app with the name Wise ID, that is on Apple, iTunes, Android, Wise ID, like Wise ID. And that app issues a unique identity for the person. So the vision of WiseKey that your identity is not a Facebook identity or a Google identity, your identity is something that you should own and should be under your control. And that identity then is associated with your consent, which is uh, done through the uh, integration of identity technology and blockchain. So you can, for instance, uh, provide consent to people to access your data, but you are the one that provide that consent, nobody for you. So this, this, this design has been used in the COVID uh, fight because uh, in Europe, you need to, uh, authenticate the person first, so you need an identity for the person, and you don't want the government to own that identity, that identity should be yours. You need an identity to certify that the COVID test was actually a real COVID test, or the vaccination test was actually a real vaccination test and not a counterfeited or a copy. And when you do that, you associate this identity with that certificate into one wallet, one encrypted wallet, which is under your control. So if you go to an airport or you're boarding a plane or you're going to holiday, actually, we just announced uh, a few days ago, the government of Seychelles just uh, signed with us. So it's wise keep providing the entire identity for the entire country and also for passengers going into the country. So if you are travel as a tourist, the uh, Seychelles now is asking you to prove that you have a vaccination certificate and you have a COVID or a COVID test certificate. And they want to be sure that this is you, so it's associated with your identity. So Wiseki has this technology, and we have been helping uh, organ international organizations like IATA. I don't know if you know them. They are the International Airline Traffic Organization. This is the standard body for all the uh, airline traffic to develop a standard so we can start to move, right? Because without this technology, we're going to be locked uh, for a long time. I mean, maybe we can go outside our house. But before we start to um, regain international travel, we need to have a method that allows you to prove that you are not infected and you have your vaccine without compromising your data. Because what you don't want is with this excuse to let governments or, or organizations to data mine on your data. So this is the core technology for Wisecube. Okay. All right. Um... All right. Anything that I missed that you want to quickly say before I missed? I asked, I mean, we had th a hundred, hundreds of questions. I asked mo I asked about 30 of them. Anything that I missed that you want to say before you head off and get back to work? Well, 
just because the focus is now on non-fungible token, just to say that Wiseki is going to be a showing progress report into that during the next two months. This is going to be a, because this is very hot now, and there's a huge amount of brands like LVMH, like uh, Sotheby's, like Christie's, and they are figuring out how they're going to enter into this. So Wiseki is going to be very focused on that. But as I said before, this is not the only thing we do. But what we do, and we are Swiss, we want to do it well, right? Yeah, we are very. That we are very precise on our technology. So um, the learning curve that we are getting from this new technology is going to help us to influence the next business model on the internet, which is sh which is shifting, right? The business model on the internet is shifting from the analog world to the digital and now to the token world. And, and this is a very important, although people think that the uh, NFTs is only blah, blah, and 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 and, uh, and buzz, is it's not really. It's a, it's a revolutionary technology that if it's well integrated in real application, it can change the way the internet makes money. Yep. No, that, I, I mean, and I, the Swiss angle makes you guys work harder. You need to be the best. Palantir is US-based, and their valuation is trading at, 10x what yours is or whatever you so it's an opportunity for you guys to go out there and improve yourself so we appreciate carlos you coming on uh you know the show today obviously the markets do what they do in the short term you know you're seeing your stock move from 40 percent, 20 percent, whatever it is the short term doesn't mean anything it's where you're going to be in three months six months and me as an investor interviewer i try to buy positions in six months from now a year from now three years from now I mean, I had Tesla for now for eight years and it's, uh, you know, you know the story. So that's what you're looking for. It's not the daily move that you really care about. No, what is important, and I will say that as a conclusion, is that uh, people that they are investing in the traditional first generation of internet growth, like social media and and all these companies, and I start $10, $10 trillion economy, uh, then they have a huge problems of the way they, they handle data, the way they issue identity. They should start to look into this new generation of companies like Wisekey. Then they are using their cybersecurity, data protection, protecting individual identity in priority. So we are not monetizing that part. Yep. This is why we have the revenue. But in the other side, we are developing new business models, which are going to be the business models of the future. And, and the watch is an example of it. And so anyone that wants to uh, continue making money in the future, they should seriously look at this sector. Yep. No, absolutely. So, all right. Well, thank you again, Car Carlos, for coming on. Uh, it sounds like it's just the beginning for you guys. Please come on more often when you have news to break or things you want to share. Come on, uh, you know. We're here for we're here for the people, by the people. That's what we do. We do it differently, and uh, we're fed into every single brokerage platform. And uh, thank you for coming on. We really we really appreciate it, man. Thank you for the opportunity, and look forward to being in contact. All the all best. Right. All right, all the best, man.